Hola a todos and welcome to another video of Julia Journey juggling jargon joyfully. In today's video we're going to talk about how types work in Julia. The first thing that you need to know is that everything has a type in Julia. So when you write down 1 and you write down 1.0, these things have different types. The type can always be obtained with type of. The type of 1 is a int 64 and the type of 1.0 is load 64. Some objects like the int 64 also appear in other amount of bits. So you also have the int 32. So this has only 32 bits and you also have 16 and 8 variation. For the float is the same thing. You have float 32 of 1.0 and you also have big float. You also have big int by the way. So all of these things exist. As you saw before, we also had strings and symbols and whatnot. So all of those things have types as well. Even the functions have types. So like the function exp, which is the exponential, has a speci special type. If we create a function, for instance, f of x equals x squared, and we ask the type of f, we're going to have a specific type for this function. Some functions, anonymous functions, similar to lambda, they can be defined using an arrow. So x goes to x squared minus x. This is a, a generic function or anonymous function. You can see the type of that function to be this strange thing here. Don't worry too much about it. It's a complicated thing. We're not gonna go into the details, but be aware the types of functions, they are a special case. You cannot easily define what the function type is going to be. In Julia, you can only instantiate things with concrete types, but you also have abstract types. So for instance, the type abstract float is a abstract type for floats. Uh, so a float 64, is a abstract float. Okay, so this symbol, uh, less than column, is used to denote is of a uh, subtype of the, the specific type. And you can always use super type to get the super type of the type. So if you keep applying super types, so uh, if I have not talked about it, uh, if I have not talked about this, there's something called the pipe in Julia, which is the, the pipe symbol and the uh, greater than symbol this goes to and then you apply a new function so this is the same as the thing above so if you keep applying super types to a type yeah you're gonna get more and more abstract types and eventually you're going to find the type any in julia the most general type that you can have is the type any these things are important because when you have a container the types themselves can only be of uh, concrete type, but the container can be of elements of a more abstract type. So for instance, if you have 1.0 and 2.0, this is a float 64 array. So it's an array of uh, with elements of type float 64. And you can get the element type by using L type of V. Uh, but in some cases, like if you have float 32 of uh, of this number here uh, well in this case it gets converted to the float 64 so that's also something to be aware it tries to be uh, the least amount of generic so the least amount in this case will be just use float 64 and promote the float 32 but if you do something else um, for instance uh, string uh, the type of the, the only common type for a float 64 and a string is the type any. So now the element type of V is any. Oh, by the way, if you don't give any object to a array when you create it, it's gonna have the implicit element type any. This is usually not what you want to do. To create an array with a specific type, you can just prefix with the type that you want to give it, so like float64, and now this is an array of float64. Even if you just put a single element, which is an integer, it's gonna be converted to a float64. If you try to give it something that cannot be converted to a float64, you're gonna have an error because it's forcibly asking the numbers inside to be converted to float64. This also works for downgrading, so if you have a 1.0 and you try to convert to an int64, 
given that the 1.0 can be converted to an inter integer number, uh, this works. Of course, if you try to convert 1.2, this is not going to work because you cannot create the integer. You can round, but that's not the same thing. And finally, as I said, you can just define the type. And in some cases, you might want to do that to avoid this conversion. So instead of having a integer and a float, I have two floats. But let's say that I want to keep this more generic. I can force V to be a any array and then one does not get converted to a float 64 uh, value. Uh, you can use less generic types. For instance, the uh, real type would be, I think, a good one here. And now you have real numbers which can have any type under real. I have created a, a specific function uh, called type tree. I'm going to leave the code in this notebook, which you can find in the comments. Uh, but the code is kind of complex because it uses a, gra a graph visualization library. I just want to show some examples. Uh, so this is the type uh, tree for the type float64. Uh, so the first super type is abstract float, then real, then number, then any. If you have a float32 as well, these two things are siblings in this tree. If you have an integer like int64, you have the integer uh, branch and then you have the sign branch because you also have the uint64 which is the unsigned branch you also have booleans so a boolean is also an integer but is directly uh, descended from integer you have strings that up here directly from any you have chars which are characters single character if i have not mentioned is just using a single quote the character is also if you take a string like r and you get the first element this is going to be that character okay so the second element is a you also have the complex type so complex f64 which is a specific type of complex is a complex using float 64 numbers i'm not going to go into the details of complex numbers but know that for each real type, you can have a complex number of that specific type. So you could have a complex number of Boolean. Okay, this would, this breaks my code here. You can see there is a bad label format. So that's also one of the reasons for me to not go there. As I said before, you also have types nothing. So nothing is a specific type. Uh, and you have type missing. So when you deal with, with Python, you have the type, you have the value none. The value none has the equivalent of nothing here. Uh, you have lowercase nothing. And this lowercase nothing, you can see nothing appears in the notebook because that's the objective of nothing. The type of nothing is uppercase n nothing. Missing is used mostly for data, like when you read a CSV and you have a missing uh, number. Uh, some languages use NA, uh, not available. And in Julia, you have the missing value, which is again, same thing. You have missing lowercase and the type of missing lowercase is missing uppercase. So let's stop here for now. Well, thanks for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a comment if you want to know more, if you have more questions. Please like and subscribe. And remember to press the bell button to be notified of future videos. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.